After weeks of uncertainty, with the Green Knight being taken off the UK release plan, I decided to don my best green shirt, get a VPN, and finally be able to talk about it. This is my review of the Green Knight. The Green Knight tells the story of Sir Gawain, King Arthur's reckless and headstrong nephew who embarks on a daring quest to confront the eponymous Green Knight, a gigantic emerald skin stranger and a tester of men. Now before I dive into my thoughts on the Green Knight, I will still not dive into spoilers despite you probably having seen this movie already way before I did. Throw all your thoughts down there in the comments below, tell me your takeaways from it because this is one of those movies that is open to interpretation. It's very ambiguous in its meaning and storytelling so throw it all down there and while you're down there if you're new to the channel first of all thank you so much for clicking on this video why don't you consider clicking that subscribe button because if you enjoy this you'll join a beautiful film fan community and you'll do wonders to get the content out there for more people. Arthurian legends are probably one of the if not the oldest story of storytelling as we know it today. It has obviously evolved, it has obviously changed, but it is still something that has remained ever since like the 9th century. So whenever a new story of Arthurian legend comes to the screen, or to the pages for that matter, I'm always interested. I've always had an interest for the Arthurian lore for Arthur himself, Merlin, the Knights of the Round Table. So I was dying to see the Green Knight, not only because of all those reasons, but because it comes to us from one of the most prolific and inventive filmmakers working today in David Lowry. He does not disappoint in his direction. This is very much a unique vision from a director that, as I previously mentioned, is open to a lot of interpretation. Lowry is very ambiguous in the meanings of his version of the Green Knight. He doesn't care to embellish, or in this case continue to embellish, the legends of Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table and his utopian kingdom known as Camelot. As soon as we start this film, Camelot is dying away. King Arthur is dying away. You see none of the glory, you see none of the victories, of the conquests, all of them together pulled off. You see what happens afterwards. What comes after all of that? And it's much more interesting. Gawain is the young rookie who is not even a knight. He spends his days and nights screwing dames around the town and drinking and slaving away and he's not even interested in knighthood. Is when a test is thrust upon him that he finds himself an opportunity to be worthy of being a knight, to be worthy of becoming possibly the king once his uncle King Arthur passes away. Even Arthur himself, we see him decaying from the beginning of the film. He's an old man who is not glorified in any way as a heroic, he's just a man. And I think the setting stages of the film being presented in such a way from Lowry truly show what the film is actually about because yes, it's this knight who sees the spectacular things and gets tested along the way in a journey that could possibly make him a knight. It's a coming of age story. It's about a kid learning what it is to be a man. It's about the true meaning of courage and honor. Gawain starts his journey as someone who is doing it because he guesses he has to because Arthur himself is thrusting upon him the responsibility of doing what was told. When the Green Knight comes to Arthur on Christmas, he challenges anyone to strike a blow on him, but with a condition that a year from then he can strike back the same blow. So when Gawain hastily decapitates him in front of everybody, assuming he just lay to rest like any normal man, but he comes back to life, this is when Gawain learns the true meaning of fear. Because David Lowry is not worried about idealistic concepts of courage, honor, knighthood, bravery, he's just worried about telling a story of a guy in a way that is relatable. And he tells the story with a lot of ambiguity, yes, but astounding visuals. This film looks like nothing 
you have ever seen. The gigantic scope yet the personal themes and symbols captured in David Lowry's Green Knight are astounding to watch and to think about, to piece them together in their true meaning. Gawain's perspective is the classic one when we think about Arthurian legends. He sees the glory, he seeks that glory. He seeks the adoration of his people, of his uncle. He seeks to become something more, but what it is actually to become something more? And that is the question that David Lowry poses to us in The Green Knight. Dev Patel's Gawain, and yes, Gawain is the correct way to say the name, he's constantly tested throughout this film about his perceptions and ideas of what it is to be a man, to be brave, to have honor. And Lowry is brave enough to make this character fail and face his shortcomings, face his faults, and learn from them, most importantly. The Green Knight is a very mature film, a film that is brave enough to not give easy answers to our character nor to its audience. The visuals astounding, the score absolutely ethereal, it takes you to another plane entirely immersing you in this gigantic gigantic wild landscape and journey that Gawain himself is going to. And the Green Knight, wonderfully played by Ralph Innocent, who is such a treasure, just put this guy in everything and anything. That voice sends shivers down your spine. Even though he does not have a lot of screen time, his presence is constantly felt through the story, the pressures on Gawain and his journey. He works as this powerful, mysterious force of nature that you don't know what his intentions are or why he's doing it. But the mysticism present in this character and throughout the story are what truly elevates it. And although all these wonderful qualities and meaning, symbolism and themes are all there, I do feel the film is a little bit troubled by its framing. It tries to pay homage to the original poem in a lot of ways and that affects the pacing and structure of the film. There are a lot of times where the film is just happening. Certain scenes are occurring and the point of those scenes has been made but it just continues on going to linger in on Gawain's perspective. You understand why they're there but to me it just set the film back a little bit. The Green Knight is a spec spectacular tale of manhood and it's obviously not going to appeal to everyone and it's easy to see why. A film set in the time of King Arthur in Camelot as one young knight rises up to the ranks and seeks to find the honor in himself but then there's not really any action it's just this man being tested by the mysticism of nature all through his way. It's ambiguous and ambitious and to me that really raises the film's stake in a lot of ways. I'm giving The Green Knight an A-. minus. And so those are my thoughts on The Green Knight. We could have this conversation for days. I truly believe there's so much to discuss and dissect in this film. So let me know your thoughts if I missed anything that you found in the film, whether for the good or for the bad. Throw it all down there in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and if you are still watching but still haven't clicked the subscribe button, consider clicking it because if you're still watching you enjoyed it on some level. Thank you so much once more. You are the best. I'll be back very soon with more reviews and I hope to see you in those. So until then, love each other and love the movies.